Good evening, I'm Eric Franke. Sarah Carlson has the night off. First tonight at 10, Carrie Bowerman died unexpectedly in Vietnam and her family still doesn't know why. They spoke only with News 3's Jennifer Hoff about their quest for the truth. Eric, the brief autopsy report explaining Carrie's death hardly gives her family any comfort. They claim Vietnam's government is covering up what really killed her in the interest of the country's successful tourism industry. Our research suggests that it's not impossible, considering more than half a dozen other tourists' recent deaths are similar to Carrie's, including Carrie's own travel partner. Given the views, it's no doubt tourists flock to Lake Geneva a small town where a big mystery is brewing. Carrie and I have been friends since the age of 14. We met freshman year of high school. The last time the two would meet was July, when Jason Von Seth took this picture in South Korea. She kind of looked into the program and she, you know, jumped on board and she absolutely loved it. No, I didn't know that. Twice, Carrie Bowerman spent time teaching English in Seoul. It's when she and fellow teacher Kathy Wynn took a break this summer and traveled to Vietnam that things went wrong. They were spent time on the beach. They went to dinner. They went and had a few drinks after dinner. They went back to their hotel. They woke up in the morning sick. Both girls left their hostel on the coast for the local hospital. Kathy was released. Carrie wasn't. Three hours after being admitted, the 27-year-old died. The uh, hotel won't talk. The the hospital won't talk, the, the police won't talk, nobody will talk. Carrie's grandmother's frustration is compounded by the couple sentences in an autopsy report recently released to Vietnam's U.S. consulate from local police, suggesting Carrie died from respiratory failure and brain swelling. Not what caused it, no secondary cause, no, no, nothing else. Carrie's low blood pressure, trouble breathing, and vomiting. I have seen once in residency. Are symptoms consistent with chemical poisoning, according to St. Mary's ER doctor Kyle Martin, who's not affiliated with Carrie's case. I mean, it does ultimately get get absorbed, you know, and, and metabolized to the point where you could, you know, you could do an autopsy a few days later and it may not, you may not be able to actually find evidence that that was in the patient's body. Evidence is mounting, despite it being a tricky diagnosis, and Asian media outlets are linking Carrie's death to tourists who died in Thailand. Washington State native Jill St. Ange and a Norwegian woman stayed in the same hotel when they visited the country three years ago. Two years later, New Zealander Sarah Carter would go there, followed by Naomi and Audrey Bellinger a year later. Police reportedly found an insect repellent in the Canadian sisters' bodies that's banned in most countries, but legal in Thailand and Vietnam meant for crops and bed bugs. The cases have caught the attention of travel expert Peter Greenberg. The patterns here are quite similar. Uh, people were staying in hotels that had used this chemical. Uh, we don't know the extent to which the chemical was used, but that seems to be the common thread. It doesn't stop at Carrie's death. Despite leaving the hospital, her co-worker, Kathy Wynn, died two days later. I guess for me personally, I'm just wondering if another situation like this is going to occur and how many more situations like this have to occur before somebody does something about it. Until then, Jason Von Seth is doing what he can. He's created a Facebook page just a month ago that nearly 5,000 people now follow. Part of the reason why I started Protected Travels is just to be a place to better educate people, also obviously encouraging people to travel. Myself, I would never go. If it were, if I, even if I were young, I would never go after this. While they wait for answers, Carrie Bowerman's loved ones hope this doesn't happen to anyone else. They're remembering her life, all his mystery surrounds Carrie in death. Now, it's important to note Dr. Martin says chemical poisoning symptoms are similar to other sicknesses and that poison is treatable, but only if it's diagnosed quickly. Eric. Boy, this is scary when you think about this travel. Uh, are there organizations out there that can help families like Carrie's? And, and what are they saying about all this? Yeah, there's a couple, and we've reached out to uh, the World Health Organization in particular because that organi organization has told CNN that it suspects poison too, but that it's having trouble tracing its origin. While Vietnam's U.S. Consulate, another organization, tells me in an email that it is assisting Carrie's family 
and is supporting the country's investigation efforts, but that it can't comment any further than that. And there are also several senators across the country that have written letters to the Secretary of State demanding some of these answers too, Eric. It's always difficult to get a body back from overseas. How did they get her body back in the United States? Well, in this case, they decided to cremate her. And while that did eliminate any chance of another autopsy here in the United States, it cost Carrie's family only $2,500 versus $14,000 that it would cost to have shipped her body back. And some companies, though, do offer some insurance to uh, help offset some of those costs if this were to happen to anyone else overseas. Boy, an eye-opening story. Thanks for sharing with her. Wish her family the best in this difficult time. Jennifer, yep. thank you. Mm -hmm.